I think it defines IDB as a development institution. I mean, finance can go into anything. It could be um, IT, it could be uh, science, it could be um, uh, consumption, it could be anything. But um, this fund um, tries to unlock one of the major binding constraints on development. If you look at all the countries that have progressed, uh, it's really about capture, con conquering nature, it's about overcoming problems, it's about solving immediate problems around the environment. And what this fund does is, one, it privileges science and technology, which has been ignored for a long time in our countries, but also makes it local, because um, science itself um, has been um, so um, homogenized um, and international and globalized, it misses some of the local problems. Uh, what is important, what is the most pressing scientific problem on the streets of London, is not the most pressing problem in a rural area that's dealing with maternal death, dealing with um, um, high infant mortality, uh, dealing with a lack of girl child education, dealing with out of school children. Um, so technological innovations, for example, that bring education closer to the poor, uh, using um, information technology might be far more important to a country in Africa than um, innovations that deal with, with space, you know, and so on. So I think what, what this does is, first of all, it raises awareness about science technology, but also makes it extremely local so that people are able to address their most pressing problems. And that's what development is about, going down to the grassroots. And this is something we appreciate. Yes, because at the end of the day, it's about the welfare of the people. It's about saving. I, I, I mean, after the dean, you're talking about life. You're talking about wealth. You're talking about nasab. You're talking about, um, uh, about, about progeny. And look, today, uh, children are dying. Okay, Mothers are dying in childbirth. Children, we're dealing with malnutrition. Children are dying at, uh, at age uh, under, under, under five. Uh, people are dying because of a lack of access to potable water. You have new technologies that make it possible for uh, people to have clean water in rural areas, and that will save millions of lives. Now, it looks very simple, but just giving access to portable water has a much greater impact on very poor people than um, other forms of, um, of, of, of research. I mean, I'll give an example. I was just speaking to Dr. Mukhtar in there. Um, just a few weeks ago, I came across a gentleman in northeast of Nigeria who has um, this idea of bringing, you know, these um, tablets on which children study the Quran. Um, and he's uh, produced a system where he puts on um, actually a computer tablet uh, on, 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 the, on, on, the, on the board and children holding it in the way they usually hold it when they read the Quran can study the Quran and then study mathematics and study English in, in, in a local school so that children who are theoretically out of school and who are in these um, Zawiya studying uh, the Quran can um, at, the, at one and the same time read their Quran chapter and then have their arithmetic class and have their English class and then go back. And now um, that, it was amazing when he's, when, and this was in Northeast Nigeria, and I was saying to Mokhtar, you know, this is the kind of idea that I hear Dr. Cindy talking about. It's not rocket science. It's uh, what, how do you scale that up? We have three million out of school children in Northern Nigeria. Many of them actually are in Quranic schools. Okay, but they don't have formal education. How do you just uh, put that tablet, use technology, uh, maybe use some solar power nearby, you know, and get them in the same method that they've done hundreds and hundreds of years, sitting in front of a scholar to study the Quran and study math, study um, um, technology, and maybe study robotics. And this is, I think, um, it, I mean, theory, in principle, I think it's transformational. You know, and, and we begin with, with, with an idea, but we'll have to wait for the results. But I think the role we have, all of us, is to look and find these ideas. Sometimes the ideas are there, but they don't know how to get to, um, uh, to, to the funding. I think what Dr. Cindy said about us being ambassadors is going to be critical. Everyone needs to go back home, find these ideas, bring them to this fund, and then connect the ideas with the funding. The young people have always been the engine of growth. Um, young ideas have always been the, the challenge uh, of the way, the way, uh, challenging the way we think normally has been the way to disrupt and create growth. If you look at all the countries in the world that have made progress, that progress has come from these ideas. Uh, my message to you is to think, to be bold, to be courageous, and to have the courage to try your ideas. 
we need to move, we need to challenge, normalize way of thinking, and we need to overtake those countries that have gone well ahead. The world needs you. This is your time. Take it. Thank you. Thank you.